even though that movie is crap, it's still better than 2019 Aladdin. Anyway, allow me to bring in my guest, starting off with... Hello, everyone. Hey. And uh, we have our other buddy. Yeah, an ent- entrance uh, should it'd be good. Please welcome. Oh, greetings, minions. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, well, Kodak had to leave a tad early, and honestly, like, we pretty much ended soon after, Mm -hmm. by a few minutes. So, any thoughts that you weren't able to get to about Prince Caspi before before we moved to Voyage of the Dawn Treader? Not really, because I, I think I already said my piece about it last oh, time, exactly. Okay. But I, if I have to say one other thing about it, it's been the book, because it takes a lot more, I would say probably a lot more creativity with the book, exactly. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I honestly found it amusing that Valeria was like, I, I, I think that it's better and worse than the book. Well... <laughs> This is like, and, and Becca said, I, "I'm amused that he can't, he couldn't bring himself to say the movie is better than the book." Well, but I stand by that though, because the good bits, I think the good bits are better in the book, but the construction is worse. So there are parts that are of the book that are better, but the construction is worse, and the later part is is mostly worse. Like the Caspian, Caspian's upbringing. Yeah, I mean, Prince Caspian's upbringing is good, is, is I think, better in the books. That part um, is better in the book. And uh, and um, what was the other thing? The, when they come to Narnia, it's, it's at least as good in the book. But then later on, the book kind of, the book never quite recovers from that lengthy in, interruption where, mm. you know, because the, there's a big interruption where they where they take a break to talk about Prince Caspian, but they never never quite recovers when the Pevensies come back. Um, mm. But I will say one thing: Your Highness is better than the book. <laughs> Oof! <laughs> I never said which book. There's probably a book somewhere that's better than. Uh, I think that I would say that it is better than. Fifty Shades of Grey. Let's go with that. I haven't Anything's read better that. Than that. Anything's better than that tripe. <laughs> I am considering listening to Gilbert Godfrey's live reading of that. <laughs> <laughs> that will be entertaining, actually. And very, how very educational and very erotic. <laughs> okay. So this this would probably be kind of sh- well comparatively short since we're only covering one movie today. Hmm. Voyage of the Dawn Treader is kind of a hot mess. Yeah, it's a, it's a, really. Yeah, it's 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 got a lot of problems, and it's. Interesting to compare it to the BBC version. But the BBC version just kind of took the book accurately, um, including the I declare all uh, slaves in this market freed. Uh, it's just that this one, I think part of it was Voice of the Dawn Trader doesn't work as a movie very well because with a movie, you have to go with a certain measure of structure you have to do arcs 
you have to do a climax and you have to have some sort of antagonist that you're going up against. Yeah, and this so gone. It doesn't have him. And unfortunately, and unfortunately for the filmmakers, Prince Cast uh, Voyage of the Dawn Treader doesn't really have those. Yeah, it feels like a by the numbers fantasy film essentially. It's just with Narnia sprinkled in, sprinkled into it exactly. That's what it feels like. I think it might work better. Maybe it might work better as a mini series or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah, since The Hobbit has a similar structure in some respects to The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. However, one slight advantage that The Hobbit has is that The Hobbit has a climax at the end and an, a very, very specific end goal as opposed to kind of a more vague find the seven lords thing as opposed to the slay the dragon because you have the buildup of the end boss at the end of the road yeah i mean there is a climax in the sense that they come to oslin's country that's in a literary sense that's a climax but film is a little bit there are things that are harder to do on film than in literature yeah that's the part of the problem which which means that sometimes you just can't. Sometimes the the sometimes the film just can't be as good as the book because you, there are things you can't in certain areas anyway because there are certain things you can't do like the scouring of the shire. You can't do the scouring of the shire in in the in the in the Lord of the Rings films, but the films suffer a little bit because of that. I mean, not as films, but I mean in relation to the original. Mm -hmm. It's important thematically, but you can't really do it in, in in the film because of the because the rules of the genre are so strict. Yeah, there's also like I think that if they had asked people to stay for the scouring of the Shire, the people would have gotten bored. Or to love it. It's just like we've been sitting here for several. For at least yeah, two I was gonna. Hours. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Are you really losing anything out there if you remove that part from the book from the film essentially? Um, necessarily speaking, speaking solely as a film, perhaps not, but, but speaking yeah. in terms of the themes of the original book. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of strengths to the themes of the book where it's evil basically comes to your home and ru ruins it while you're away. Uh, and Kind of, and uh, as well as the, your home is be is different than it was, and you can't mm. quite fix it. And yeah, I want a minty flavor. What about I minty? Think... Oh, somebody's in there. The Brightness is in luck, there. Essentially. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna listen up while I work. I'm gonna listen while I work. I suppose that works. Have fun bad. with that. Yeah. 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 I, I'm not going to be as funny though if, as you are. Yeah, Becca has a a great sense of humor that keeps us ips ips us going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're lamers. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Won't lie about but that. Valer Valerian's a, our lovely um, milk toast troll, and uh, we love him because of it. <laughs> we saw that. <laughs> um, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> of course you are. Nobody's hmm. ever argued with that. Um, I, I, yeah, I think with kind of like the Scar and the Shire, the, the, I think that it's just, it would have felt very anticlimactic. Uh, hmm. And, and, I do think that it does convey a lot that the film does what it can to convey the fact that like these four are basic, basically like they can't really relate to any of the hobbits anymore. That really. part they were able to, that part they were able to, that, they were able to keep that part in. 
um, that part was they were able to do. I do remember that. Um, that they managed. Um, but you, but, but in a film, it's it's difficult because in a book, in the book, the the thematic part and the emotional part because they're home and then you know what we we just came home and it's ruled by this by this tyranny and it's ruled by this evil wizard now. What the blazes is going on? That works very well in the books. In the film, then there's this thing about, wait, about, um, wait, we're having an action scene and it's just a bunch of hobbits fighting these ruffians. Who cares about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little bit more superficial because of, the, because of certain limitations of the film genre. Yeah. It, I I did like the the BBC radio drama actually did the uh, Scour of the Shire as mm. when they did that one, and I was surprised when it didn't happen in the movie. And I was kind of like, oh okay. I, I I think the main thing that kind of surprised me was like, why is Saruman not getting any resolution in the theatrical version? Yep, I remember that too. Yeah, that, was, was, that was that was yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, uh, Codex. I didn't quite that. Yeah, I was pissed when <laughs> I was pissed when I didn't see Christ the magnificent Christopher Lee again. I was pissed. I mean, it's it's an important part. He's like in yeah, it's very in, important. Two films out of three. So yeah, yeah, that that was a weakness. That was definitely a weakness. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That does sum it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Let's kind of talk about differences slash kept elements. So most of the events of the book happen. It's just that they have shuffled a lot of things around. Yeah. And it's very and condensed islands. One of them cut... I don't know... I. I, I'm, I'm conflicted about the idea of combining Goldwater Island and Dragon Island. Because Goldwater Island's supposed to be kind of was described as being relatively verdant. And if a dragon could just... I'm also wondering, how did the dragon get all that gold? All the treasure? Well, to be fair, in the books, it never says where he got it from. I guess he got it from yeah. pirates or calamines or whatever. Yeah, people shipwrecked. Mm. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the Lone Islands uh, have been making money off of the slave business for a while now. Mm. Yeah. Kind of like a third, it's kind of like a third world country where they make money out of sweat shopping. Yeah. Essentially. It's a new neoliberal paradise, if you'll pardon the politics. <laughs> uh, I love you, Bulgaria. It never change. <laughs> we don't do love. Okay, I'm moderately affectionate toward you. That's slightly louder. <laughs> <laughs> this is the touching moment we right now, dice framing. Larry explains everyone else. Sorry, yeah, what's that? <laughs> what was that? What was that? I'm not that here. You're saying that you're laughing too much. Valerian explains slavery 101. Uh, slavery is bad. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go yeah. with that galaxy brain take. It can it can keep going. Oh, well, Caspian's all for slavery. You didn't say anything about that in the film. <laughs> hmm. After all, we discovered at the last stream is a lot of experience. <laughs> that is true, Becca. That is very true. <laughs> Oops. Half a moment. Did you do? I'm missing out on something because I'm doing something else on the site. Let me just see what, what I'm missing. I have a lot of experience in the field enslaving people, you mean? Well, you know, <laughs> one has to make a living somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you heard it, folks. Did, Count so, midnight screenings, so midnight screenings had slaver Brian and stream team reviews has slaver Balerian. 
<laughs> well, I mean, basically everyone by right is my slave anyway. Oh, good. So we're equal opportunity slavery. Great. Well, everyone belongs to me, not to anyone else. Currently, since I am not married, I don't belong to anyone. Sorry. Uh, no comment. <laughs> mm. This is. I'm going to. Pardon me a moment. I need to go. To, I need to go. Vomit. Pardon me a moment. This might. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What is the idea of me getting married that at, at gross? <laughs> No, it's probably, no, it probably the um, replica film being replica film and George Lucas agreeing with one another or something. There we go. That's done. Yeah. <laughs> wow, my uh, <laughs> the idea prospect of me getting married and having spawn is that gross to you? Actually, never mind. I sort of suddenly realized why you would be disturbed by that. <laughs> Dunk mm. comes out with a weirdly wholesome take like that, and I have to check myself. And it's actually still him. Well, no, it probably isn't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> probably, he probably has a random twin uh, brother who turns up occasionally and says something that's not disgusting. I wish I had a brother. I have four little sisters, and I could barely do anything, anything with them. You have yeah, four, I, I guess. Had... You can barely stomach one. Yeah, but I only least... managed to have the one... Uh, I have one brother and three sisters. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Wow, we're family. We're like one, one, what is it? A Y chromosome off? What is it? The Y chromosome? I can never keep them straight. Uh, men have Y chromosomes, women don't. Okay, so one X, so it's a minus one Y chromosome and we're they're pretty much the exact same family structure. Yeah, I did have one brother. He was also in closest in age to me, so. Hmm. He was like four years things. older. He was kind of like a guru when I was young. I see. Dun's wholesome twin, lol. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yes, so, lol indeed. Let's yeah. See. <laughs> so, Voyage of the Dawn Shredder get back on topic. Uh, Voyage of the Dawn Shredder is a weird, weird movie. Especially since they chose... like, I, It feels like they felt like they were shackled to a particular uh, structure with this that forced them to say, okay, let's have a climax and a bad guy. <laughs> And they decided since Dark Island is a thing that existed in the book, that they would make that the bad guy. Yeah. That's and it's really bad. Yeah, it's dumb. It was dumb. It looks like a green fart. It's really weird. At least it's minty flavor. I'll give it that. But still. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds that sounds rather nice. Hmm. Yeah. Do I detect a hint of minty freshness? <laughs> <laughs> what the? It's a Shrek product. Which uh, reminds me, we need to do Shrek sometime. That might be fun. An edgy all, version okay. of Shrek. Well, Game of after all, Game of Thrones is just an edgy version of Shrek. Oh yes. God! Which reminds me that I will read Wind of Winds of Winter when it comes out. I, I'll read the audio. I'll listen to the audio book. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll buy it and I'll get it. Um, also, I think Dance, Dance with Fangs is better than that chap thinks, but I've only got halfway through his video anyway, because then, Which, then we started doing things. Which chap? Oh, uh, Treebeard. Oh. The chap you linked to, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, I I didn't mind Dance with Dragons. I just think that it's got a lot of filler in it. Some of his takes are subjective. I'm just like, eh. 
don't mm -hmm. totally agree. But yeah, there's a lot of filler in Dance with Dragons. Yeah. Pardon me. No worries. Uh, pardon me. I'm doing some work on the side. Uh, mm. Well, the only thing I can the only thing I can say about this one that I can say is a positive is the Eustace. That's the only positive I can say about it. Yeah, Eustace is very good. I don't know who Eustace Yusuf is. I know a Yusuf of the Black Guard who fought El Cid, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that reminds me of of the Silver Chair. The the boy's name is Eustace. That's what I meant. Eustace, so Eustace sorry. Useless, I dare no, no. I'm quoting. Oh, okay, Useless, sorry. I dare say he is. No, Eustace, used to it. I Death <laughs> Drumkin is best Drumkin. Yeah. Mm. I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> give it, gonna be the total. Give it, when's Winter totally gonna be Game of Thrones the Shrek edition? I tell you. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's... Yeah, indeed. Back after he is, he is. Be right back for a second. Yeah, I was actually very, very surprised to find out that he's six three in real life, and that he was at, he was actually seventeen when he did this role. I was like, you do not look like you're seventeen. Your 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 aging must have must have skipped a few beats. It's once you like turned eighteen. He looks like he's 12, which is pretty impressive. I would have to say that the major problem with this film is the extremely heavy handed and really stupid moral messaging that is so, so so obvious oh i don't remember the moral messaging but then i, I the, the well, pro, part of the problem is we were we were talking we were saying all, saying all sorts of bizarre things what was going on so i may have well, so there may be i just say yeah, you know wasn't paying attention because brightness or someone had said something amusing i'm like oh, no, no, no. oh so, we're watching something hmm. So it's mainly that every time the characters are tempted, green fog appears on uh, the screen. So oh, okay. Really yeah, it's oh, really, okay. really stupid. I see. It's not the moral message; it's the way in which the message is presented visually upon the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. That's kind of what, the way I say the cack handed, like very simplistic moral messaging. Oh. Uh, I think that's a bad word for left-handed. <laughs> okay, heavy-handed. Heavy-handed, then. Okay, good. And I just look... At, at, it's just so frustrating because the book didn't necessarily have to make it be a I am this overarching villain tempting no, our just hero just to be it's just... vain and greedy. Yeah, it was just a venture book. That's what it was necessarily, or a venture, a venture story, more or less. And yeah, I mean, the Dark Island was scary, but it wasn't a. Th I mean, I guess there must have been some kind of entity there doing all that stuff. But mm -hmm. Lewis, uh, perhaps wisely, chose to keep that very vague, and you know, it makes it almost scarier that it's because why is this? Why is this island having this effect? It's like. How does you know, Island, how Island know what? How can, what's, what on the island can know what you've been dreaming all this time, and then make it happen? You know, hmm. it doesn't say out, out right that it's a demon or something, but it's like, but it's, it's something. Something is going on doing this, and what is it? That, that makes it yeah. even the scarier, actually. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, like it's the nothing from the never-ending story, essentially. Except mm. this in here is actually quite worse. Yeah. But nothing just eats you. This just tortures you with Lovecraftian nightmares. One thing at all, it doesn't really do anything necessarily. I mean, outside the sneeze, uh, the sea serpent, but it doesn't yeah, really do anything. Yeah, it's just nothing. It just it just steals people. 
Yeah. Like, K. Okay. It's really frustrating to say the least. Mm. It destroyed my life. I thought that was your highness. Oh, well, yeah, but okay. yeah, okay, fair well, enough. Okay. Um, uh, this, okay, so this destroyed your life. Your highness destroyed your humor. Your highness destroyed being. <laughs> that, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you wanting to know what our reaction to that one is, go to the, di I'm going to be link. I'm going to probably just come out with some kind of video in the next few weeks talking about how the uh, rumble commentaries and putting a link as well as uh, putting a link to our commentaries in the description of this uh, particular live stream. So hopefully you'll enjoy. Uh, we have a, we have some fun times. And some less than fun. Yeah, like Cat in the Hat. And I've got my commentary in the film. Hmm? I thought my commentary in this film was pretty entertaining, to some degree. Oh, agreed. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, was, it was hilarious. <laughs> we had a great time. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole thing was a riot. Yeah. I'm usually am. That's too kind, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, we were all kind of a riot. Except for me. Well, but yeah, but I was being polite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just the evil sadist who facilitates the funny. Someone has to do it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry, we'll be watching good movies for the foreseeable future. Uh, All right. Disney movie, old Disney movies. So. A few others so uh, i guess we can kind of go like island by island and make comparisons the first one where they go to the lone islands that is so radically different and so much worse wait are we going to say something yeah. about the about the opening oh the opening um uh, oh yeah, it's we probably should. More? The opening is actually pretty yeah. close. They just make Eustace a kleptomaniac. And that's, yeah. And Edmund is going through the same arc as Peter from the last movie. Which really doesn't work. Really doesn't work. And uh, it's sort of annoying that that instead of instead of Eustace doing a limerick about about the Pevensies, uh, Edmund does a limerick about useless. And that's not, I'm not trying to be a purist here, but the limerick in the book was actually pretty funny. Some kids hmm. have played games about Narnia, called Crowdly Balmia and Balmia. I think they did, they did do, have Eustace do a limerick of his own, but yeah, I would say that the limerick in the book was better, yes. No offense, but you guys sound like the opposite of a riot right now. Well, <laughs> I am offended. And Brighton, if you just use an American spelling, what is this? What is this? Why does everyone want to be American these days? Why does everyone want to be a goddamn American? Pardon my language. Everyone in the world wants to try to be. <laughs> everyone in the world wants is trying to be American. It's just so annoying. Well, we do. Yeah, know exactly. Why. Becky. He, over he overcame his issue, which in the last movie. I would say that's where he's arc ended, so to speak. Yeah. Well, there's a good reason. He's been going through puberty and wet dreams, and he just wants to get his old crush back. That is the answer. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm. Uh, no, actually, that's makes sense. Yeah. It's called the Celtic. I'm effing sorry. Well, to be fair, did, um, he did it. He gave the creepy eyes to them, the Stardust Lady. Yeah. What was her name? Um, yeah. What was her name? Lily Ann Bill. Yeah, what? that was it. Yeah. What? Who? What? What? 
they um, gave Ram you know when they got to the, the Aslan's table the Stardust lady comes down and oh, okay Cash that lady would... yeah that lady okay fair enough okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's called and... spell check. I'm effing sorry. Why? Why wouldn't someone in Britain have an American spell check? Because Google is everywhere, and because well, Google why don't is... take, turn, change the language of Google? People can do that. I'm pretty sure. Well, I think mm -hmm. Google just uses American English rather than British English. English then Google is an idiot. Kill Google. Make it scrim. Just maybe second. <laughs> Yeah, Google sucks. So. Yeah. Die, Google, die. <laughs> oh, that now this this vid is going to be taken down now. Oh, no. But anyway. But, no, <laughs> yeah, they, they really dropped the ball in that. But mm. anyway, part, sorry about the rabbit hole, but really. Yeah. Mm. I, I do think that at the moment... This stands as the weakest of the three existing guardians. Yeah. Movies. Yeah. There's a lot of issues throughout this movie, especially in the um, the fact that the like plot is really, really bad, and the character arcs are extremely shallow. Yeah, it's like Caspian abruptly has daddy issues, even though he's been doing a decent job as for three years at this point, essentially. Yeah. Did he even he didn't even know his father? Yeah. Nope. He did not. I mean in the in I know in the book he didn't. I, I can't remember in the film. I don't remember him. I f <laughs> hmm. Did he have any in the film? I don't remember it. Uh, he I th did not. He I just think Connie kind of used to mention about his father, but I, I, it was very brief, though. It, it's just a... I... Rem, the, it's kind of more a... I have... I remember my... I, I am avenging my father because it's the right thing to do as opposed yeah. to... Yeah, that that, True, that made what it is. Yeah, personal um, uh, attachment to my my sire. Yeah. So, I don't believe that it has any bearing on the story, really, it, other than. He's the dude. He got killed by Mir Iraz Ella uh, Scar, really. Yeah. So. Oh, sorry, a second. But with Voyage of the Dawn Treader, we have a lot of like episodic adventures and they tried really hard to try and create coherent overall narrative but the problem is it doesn't have one one thing that we mentioned i i actually can't take credit for this particular take because it's uh from the uh this group called the talking beast show they basically mm -hmm. stated something really interesting that Hollywood doesn't really care about journeys at all. And because of that, they just want to have everything be the climax. And because of this, they don't fully believe in any kind of narrative related to just going from place to place or trying to find some measure of personal resolution 
Hmm. as opposed to an outward resolution, unless it's specifically a drama film. Like a fantasy rom-com, unless it was really low budget, would frighten the crap out of Hollywood. It would be like, this would make no money. Please, no. We are not doing yeah, this. They, they turn, if they did it at all, they turn into a parody and get real, probably re, be really bad. Probably. Probably. Mm. Second favorite book ever, yeah. Um, mm. It's good. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah. I, I really like the book. Yeah, as do I. Yeah. Yeah, but then, you know, with Hollywood, yeah, they want action scenes. They think of fantasy as basically being action. Which I guess is better than not having fantasy at all mm. on the screen, but yeah. You can do that with something like Lord of the Rings. You can do that even though in the books it's, there's not so much action either necessarily, but you can do that with Lord of the Rings. Um, mm -hmm. You can do that with Prince Caspian. You can do it. With Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you can do it. With, with Don Trey, you can't really do it. They kind of go... Yeah, it's not necessarily. Well, Sorry? The, the book uh, well, goes out of its way not to have action scenes in yeah. it. Yeah, like I said, it's a slow burn adventure, essentially. Yeah, because the yeah. emphasis is more on what's happening with the ca characters, like spiritually and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the more interesting. That's more interesting to Lewis. Lewis couldn't care less about action scenes. Yeah, I would agree with that. And Lewis is actually on record complaining about about um what was it? it was kings i think it was king solomon's i'm going by memory but it was about king solomon's mines and apparently at the end there's this bit where they go down and they into this tomb area like where all these dead people are buried and they're afraid of being stuck there forever and but then in the film they thought sometime in the 50s i think they thought that was kind of tame oh, God, so they no, had an no, earthquake no. i'm talking so they had like an earthquake, Sorry. or I don't remember, remember what all they had. They had all this, all this suspenseful stuff happening. And Lewis says that kind of spoils the film. So, mm. I read I, I read the illustrated classics version of uh, King Solomon's Mines, and as I recall, what happened was they were being led to. The mines by Gagool, the chief witch woman, who throws a switch because she's the only one who knows about it, and be, and she kills one of the their friends who's been going on their journey with them. Uh, I think her name is Falopa. I don't remember remember very well, but after that. What happens is they're stuck. They have limited water, so they have to figure their way out. So it's not really actiony, and it's not. Really, I don't think there was like an earthquake. I not in the book, earthquake. but in the film, that might, something like that. Let me see what happened. Let me see. I think I might. I might be able to find it in this book, um, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to hold this up by looking for the book. Oh, oh no worries. Uh, uh, currently, Netflix has the Narnia license. Yeah. Not Amazon, which I'm like, I'm okay with Netflix. Netflix has less, um, shall we say, screw you money than uh, Amazon does. Amazon has screw you money. Basically, they can do whatever they want with any IP they get their hands on, and they don't have to care about oh, it. Oh, nonsense. Now what's the Oh, I found it. He says, I was once taken to see a film version of King Solomon's Minds. Of its many sins, not the least the introduction of a totally irrelevant young woman in short to accompany the three adventurers wherever they went. Only one here concerns us. At the end of the book, blah, 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 as everyone remembers, the heroes are awaiting death, entombed in a rock chamber and surrounded 
by the mummified kings of the land. The maker of the film version, however, apparently thought this tame. He substituted a subterranean volcanic eruption, and then it went better by adding an earthquake. Perhaps we should not blame him. Perhaps the scene in the original was not cinematic, and the man was right by the canons of his own art in altering it. But it would have been better not to have chosen in the first place a story which could only be adapted to the screen by being ruined. Mm. Ruined at least for me, and so forth. So that's what he says about that. Mm. Okay, it's sort of yeah, interesting yeah. how his, his misogyny kind of resurfaces there a bit, but, but which, yeah. Which is weird because I don't believe that the, uh, the lady is an invention of the film. I think that she's an actual person that is a part of the book. You could be right. Um, sometimes Lewis was like, Lewis might have been writing off the seat of his pants when he, when he wrote that. It's possible. Mm. But anyway, yeah, that, that'll give you an idea of how he feels about turning things into action, into action stuff. Oh, that's hilarious. Have you seen Bridgerton? It's shallow Jane Austen skinwalker. The show. Do not trust Netflix with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Yep. I've not seen it, but I saw it. Kind. Of, it was kind of panned in the nation. Um. So, from what I understand, I have not seen Bridgerton. I've heard very bad things about the film uh what's it the tv adaptation of uh uh cowboy bebop a lot of people did not oh, like that boy. one and it was so bad that they ended up canning it after one season because the audience hated it so much Yep. Oh, it looks like space junk. Looks like, looks like space junk is here. There's no need to fear. Spacey junk is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. And Lucy's motivation says, oh, Cares, Caresor St. Joseph says, Lucy's motivation during the magic book scene is one of the best things ever put in to print. Yeah, because there's this whole thing. It's not just the beauty thing. She doesn't, she resists the temptation to do, to do, do, do the beauty spell, but then she's, because she didn't get to do the beauty spell, she does the, I want to spy on my friends, basically, uh, spell instead. And, and Olsen has to talk to her about that afterwards. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the moral is uh, the moral development of and whatnot. The children is a lot more, is a lot deeper in the book. Except yeah. maybe Evans. I would definitely agree because the mm -hmm. book it actually has a lesson about you don't really want to hear what other people think of you when they're under pressure, and they're being pressured assured by somebody they're scared of to talk bad about you. And, it, and ultimately, you can never know what might have been. And that's actually really, really, that's actually pretty deep as far as le lessons go. Yeah, yeah it's kind of sad. Sad that the director didn't realize that. Who didn't realize that? Sorry? The director. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And plus, here's the thing as well: the the entire book was about use of growing up, uh, coming of age, essentially, and growing up, essentially. It's this should be his story, but it really isn't exactly. It's in the film, I mean, exactly. It's Evans and Pete, it's Lucy's, to some degree. Mm -hmm. Any of us yeah. do better? That is what we do not know. That is the lesson. Yeah. 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 We never know that whether we could have done better. Yeah, I mean, what if there had been a spell? You got all the attractive actresses you've ever seen in a harem. You can do a spell, and that's and 
when you do the spell, it suddenly also makes it okay to do that. Oh, so, and you do this, well. and you do the spell, and you end up finding out that no, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Hmm. I think that I would. I I know that already because I have polygamy report, or it's, or it's most of the time it sucks for all parties involved if it's a a like respectful non misogynistic uh system like what happened uh with the latter day saints during the polygamy time before uh, it got banned in the US yeah it it really only works if you have patriarchy too yeah <laughs> yeah That's an interesting hypothetical, Valeria and the Slaver. <laughs> I would be like, admittedly, I would, I would be very hard pressed if it was an, a one night orgy, marriage to a harem. I don't think that I would be very find that very appealing. <laughs> I mean, it may be too much of a good thing. Yeah, especially since there's a. There's actually a couple. There's actually a very amusing story I think that I heard in regards to that, where this guy has a mistress, and he has a wife, but his wife and his mistress get along too well, so they keep saying, "You should go back to your wife." No, you should go to your mistress, and he goes back and forth with between them all night long in the rain until the morning um, how lovely how what delightful yeah. family values they have oh um, um brightness becca also says she's got a couple one the interesting hypothetical <laughs> one and Dunn's i mentioned what? already and dunn's polygamy report my favorite <laughs> show you didn't highlight the one with the hypothetical but that's okay uh what they call misogyny is actually common sense <laughs> Uh, that's true, actually. <laughs> that is very true. I called you wholesome earlier. <laughs> Lol. That's funny. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Other things that are not very good about this movie. Well, the lone, the, well, we get to the lone islands. The lone islands bit is really bad. It's just an excuse to have an action scene. Yeah, pretty much. And it's kind of a, it's fine. It's definitely less clever than the book. The books has a massively clever uh, subplot where they're trying to ensure that the, the pug doesn't get a bunch of his slaver buddies over to help out. And that's important because it makes it so that you don't have to worry. They don't have to worry about uh, the... So, the pirates getting it into them because they only have one ship because of this they have to play things carefully and take out the governor first and there's all this lovely internal monologue where it says this is what the uh uh the characters might have done and if they had known better uh, throughout the, both when they're captured by slayers and when they're up against a compass, who doesn't even get named in the movie. No. <laughs> Funnily enough. Okay, where even are we? Uh, the Lone Island, since I don't I know we're in the Lone Island, but yeah. Okay, so we're, have we got to the bit where the slaves scene stinks? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that whole part. Yeah, the whole bit's really dumb. I don't understand why you would change something like that, to be honest. Because it's too cerebral. <clears throat> what? I declare every slave in this market free is too cerebral? 
No, it's the lead up to it. <laughs> and Governor Gumpus, did they even have Governor Gumpus? He is oh, unnamed. Oh. He is unnamed, but it's the guy that attempts to kill Eustace. Uh, well, well, I, was funny. Sorry. I think there's something that's a little off with your microphone, Kodaki Chab. Yeah, it's just. just mm. <laughs> hell, we're in hell. Well, aren't we always? Mm. Uh, what can you do? If it's done well, if it's a, if it is a done deal, why tell a story? Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know about what exactly they were thinking when they i think a big part of it is the the issue that the book has no action i think that in just theoretically the the i declare every slave in this market free that's simple enough the problem is that they must have had is the build-up that's the that's the issue that they were faced with mm -hmm. and that creates a problem for them because it's like i don't think they were intelligent enough to come up with a a better option really well let's see what does happen in the book um caspian makes friends with Lord Byrne. Uh, obviously, he's not. He's free now. Then they, then they fool Gumpus into thinking they've got, they've got all these ships. Yep. Um, and uh, and they they meet that. Oh, but before that, they they like meet with him, and he's, and he tries to put them off by, oh well, you wouldn't understand these things. You don't understand economics, but you know. But you know, blah, blah 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 blah. I have charts. I have graphs. They prove all this stuff, and then they, but then they manage to fool into thinking that that they got the fleet, and and then they just uh, just they basically stage a coup. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, it kind of is just a coup. Which means that Caspian is a tyrant, taking away freedom. Yeah, technically, uh, slaver Caspian for the win. <laughs> <laughs> slaver Gumpus for the win. I mean. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> he's a he just he just supports states' rights. That's all. The captain is not done. Oh my gosh, oh, that's good. God. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Okay, terrible pun. Yes, but it was an excellent pun. It was the most excellent pun. I I find that pun to be excellent. Excellent. It may have been excellent 3,000 years ago. I don't think they had uh, done puns back then. Don't let's get technical here. <laughs> you are technically right. The best kind of polite. Uh, the best kind of right. Oh gosh, Dunn's on board now. Eject pun maker. <laughs> uh, that is funny. So anyway, what actually even happened in the in the film? Uh, what am I echoing? I don't know. That's weird. Hmm. I want to see Roman puns in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was one about there's one about Rome from the Middle Ages. Uh, caput mundi, sed nihil caput caput mundum. Um, 
It's the head of the world, but contains nothing pure. Cap, caput mundi, sed nihil caput mundum. And why am I echoing? I do not know. I need to get mm. that as a gif. I need to get that as a cliff. And there's another one about the uh, the the motto of the Vatican cook. He knows the faith. Feed him shit. <laughs> it only works in the <laughs> 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 I've been really bad with the. I'm sorry. I've been really bad with the rabbit holes. This, 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 this thing. It's, this. That was. It's, it's, that was it actually. Like to beat them crap. I didn't but, make that one up. I know, that's, that's, but that's Catholic humor. Oh, it's it was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably the best best of the law. <laughs> Done. If you give the e this evil bun maker a wrench, I'm going <laughs> it okay. It's okay, Bellarian. You're making up for me. <laughs> Nobody can fully <laughs> replace you, madam. No one can what? Uh, no one can fully replace you, madam. Oh, no one can even remotely replace her. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, and then instead of having this intricate ruse, they just have an action scene where they just take it militarily and just kick the pirates' asses. And yeah. That's it. That is the extent of the creativity with this film. Yep. Well, there are probably bits that are more creative than that somewhere along the elsewhere somewhere but in terms of that and that that particular storyline yes it got kind of mangled yeah unfortunately mm -hmm. and i do one thing i do like about this movie is that they decide to put a mix of telmarines and narnian creatures on the dawn treader but they kind of don't really do much with it. They're just kind of buddy buddy at the which kind of is the similar premise in the book. But there's just only telemarines running this ship. Mm -hmm. I think in the book it was mostly Terebinthians and anyway, it was people from some islands who they'd hired. I think it was Terebinthians, but I don't know for some certain. I could probably check, but anyway, it was, it was like humans, I think, mostly, apart from Reaper yeah. Sheep. Yeah, I think the Reaper Sheep is the only magic animal on the on the bit. He hadn't. Uh, it's odd that there aren't any marsh wiggles, but I guess he hadn't come up with them yet. Or, uh, yeah, that is a very good point. Or mm. can can water nymphs leave? Whatever lake or river they're attached to, can they could they go on board ship? Probably not. I think that there is a um, a part in the book where they're bound to their lake or stream in the same way that a dryad is bound to her tree. Hmm. Okay, makes sense. Am I audible from here? Yes, you are. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Eustace should have narrated the movie, the Nar and then the Narnians could have been useful by virtue of how Eustace perceived them. Yeah. Yeah, that could have worked, yeah. Okay, what was that? Let's see. Eustace should have narrated the movie, and then the Narnians would have been useful. Oh! Yeah, that's... Yeah, this might be tricky to do in a film, but you could probably pull something off. It, Please we don't should make you pull anything off. That would be disgusting. Uh, uh, 
just just oh. just ice creaming. No, <laughs> done. No, you, we're not even going to go near there. Um, Eustace, yeah. but we needed more of Eustace's diary too. We could have mm -hmm. he could have put it in. He could have put it in dialogue. For example, not in efficiency again. He could have like someone could have, they could have been doing something, and he could have been there on on on, on the hoo ha on the ship, and he goes. Not in efficiency again. We're doing some low tech thing or other. <laughs> yeah, that would have been good. That would have yeah. been fun. I just thought that now. Yeah, that would have been very definitely. Um, let's see what other. I, I do. They do include a bit of Eustace's diary, and it is funny, but they don't do much of no. it, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I had no. a friend. I, I had a friend, but who said that the unreformed Eustace was one of his heroes. <laughs> Based. Yeah. But, but yeah, kind of. It could have been it. Legit, interesting content. Yeah, mm -hmm. Eustace is hit Lewis's best character arc. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I let me think. Is there? I definitely the undragoning is really really bad. The whole thing with the dragon is really weird. Mm. I do not understand what they were thinking. It's, I guess they decided, we want a dragon versus sea serpent fight. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, you didn't think, you were so preoccupied, Ed, with, Ed, with whether you could, you didn't think if you actually should. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, and to be fair, I guess if I were a modern Hollywood director. I'd be tempted to do that too, because it fits with our whole general uh, philosophy of life in terms of turning things into action and all that. This will be awesome. Yeah. This will be awesome. There's a bit of a teenage boy in in the movie industry in Hollywood in general. That would be that would be like awesome. Wouldn't it be awesome with like dragging like but the sea something is so cool, like man, like whoa. Yeah. I don't even remember the fight very well, to be honest. Neither do I, to be it, fair. It's yeah. not terribly long, admittedly. It's just Eustace flies around it with Reba Cheap on his back, <laughs> which is pretty awesome, but it's so dumb. Mm. It's really dumb. <laughs> Actually, did a little research about that. Actually, the, the director didn't want to be in this film. Actually, really? Oh, interesting. Yeah, huh. he's kind of. I mean, there was. I think um, either Simon Pegg or some people, uh, uh, some person. I don't know. Said he's kind of important for the book, and we need to have him in the book in the film because of use of in his arc essentially. Hmm. It's yep. it's interesting because Reaper Sheep is probably one of the better things in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is. He is yeah. definitely one of the better parts of the film. I promise I didn't time him out. So they did change his voice. It was, I think it was Simon Pegg who voices him in this film. Is um, what was his name? In Casper, what was his name? Hmm. Idris Elba, uh, is it? Eddie Izzard. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Who is what? Idris Elba. <laughs> we are canceling the apocalypse guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as Reaper Chief, that would actually be kind of awesome. <laughs> that would be cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. 
We as well uh, see if I can find. That was it, yeah. Ugh, In case God. we have a questions later, let me see if I can find the. Not Prince Caspian. I keep saying Prince Caspian and Liam Dontrell. It's so annoying. Well, it's kind of weird. The <laughs> Prince Caspian <laughs> and Voyage of the Dawn Treader film uh, in BBC miniseries were kind of merged into one season. Yeah. 2010 true. action fantasy blah 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 film based on blah blah blah. Okay. Okay. Is this the. All right. If we have questions later, I think I found the Wikipedia article. Mm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Yeah, I mean, there's that, and there's the fact they come to Narnia and everyone they knew was dead. Has been dead for centuries. Yeah. Maybe it hits home more when it with Silver Chair because they actually see him, and then he, he's already old, and then he dies. Hmm. Poor chap. Well, he comes back to life. Well, he gets resurrected again, so hey. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of sad that we'll, that I don't know if we'll ever see, like, it kind of seems like the development purgatory uh, has been going on with the Narnia Netflix, since I've been hearing about this for at least a few years. Hmm. Time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So basically, Netflix has it, but they're not going to do anything with it. Is that it? Pretty much. They, they are, yeah, they're kind of not doing anything. They, at least like they're developing it or something, but I, they aren't really doing much with it it's kind of just a we might want to do our our own game of thrones and it's like do you not understand that game of thrones and narnia are two very 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 different things mm -hmm. well well yes yeah. that's kind of an understatement yeah anything yeah. That's not something Amazon, is it? Yeah, Amazon would be worse because yeah. Amazon does not remotely care about anything. Yep. And I hate it so much. I hate Wheel of Time. No, I'm going to hate Rings of Power. And I'm so, so, so annoyed. Uh, three body problem. There's been no word on three body problem, honestly. It's been that, that one's another development purgatory thing. Hmm. I wish uh wish I, knew. wish I could say. Um I wish I knew I had more information, but unfortunately I don't have any. It's I think the major problem with the like Cory Arkin's island is relatively similar. I will say I hate the duffel puds. I have always hated the duffel puds, and I will oh, I will always hate the duffel puds. Do you hate them in the books too? Oh, I hate them. Yeah, I hate them in the books. Yeah, mm -hmm. fair enough. I think that's kind of the point. I think that is kind of the point, though. 
I thought that you're kind of supposed to hate. hate yeah. Hate them. Well, not hate exactly, but you're supposed to think they're really stupid because that's the kind of the idea. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Even it's. Yeah, since it's mainly just the chief is the the person who's really stupid, really. Well, he's stupid. The rest just uh, think whatever they're told to think. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all know about we all know about that. Yeah, demagoguery is not a um new thing in this world, unfortunately. No, sadly not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, so, they're mildly amusing. I'll give them that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. What Wheel of Time book? Uh, book one. Um, book. That's interesting that you skipped Wheel of Time. Uh, uh, but yeah, Wheel of Time book one is an interesting, uh, interesting beast to say the least. Uh, since it's very much a quest story as opposed to a um, uh, other modern fantasy books. But essentially the book is a is a what if Tolkien were like a tad more realistic at least as far as um, Mr. Uh, Robert Jordan, Burton was concerned. Okay, so updated Tolkien, which we already kind of have with Terry Brooks. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, basically, it starts with a, um, uh, what is it? A regular normal normal village trollic attack act and then they have to run away some plot relevant things happen throughout the book uh they'll actually come back like there'll be little side characters that come back later uh but it's it's a good book it's worth reading uh, and it has a weird, it has a bit of a weird ending at the end and end of the first book. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Yeah. Um, do, do a Stormlight, not, not the other one. Miss Wheel of Time? Um, no. Yeah. Do Stormlight instead. I'm talking to her because so that we can do our next, yeah. our next live stream well, on that. Well, well, I think that she's not interested. Clearly, no, not the, not the, not the, uh, not the wheel of time. The, uh, the stormlighty one. Yeah. Um. Other because, things. Oh, go for it, sir. Oh, just because our last live stream on that was a riot. Yeah, it was mm. great. Yeah, it was really fun. But. She's working her way through it slowly. Aspiring, you may stop pestering. Yeah. Uh, uh I, yeah, I, I've read all of them. Yeah. I, I, I am pissed at the Black Cauldron because the Black Cauldron has basically permanently poisoned the well for Chronicles of Perdain adaptations, which is really sad. I keep hearing yeah. rumblings that Disney is going to do an adaptation, which makes me very concerned. You mean like a remake? Uh, okay, so Black Culture is basically an amalgamation of the first two books. Of the, the film. Is. Yeah. The first book is called The Book of Three. The second book is The Black Cauldron. Oh, and 
they took the bad guy and the initial setup of book one and mixed it with book two. With the plot of book two. Hmm. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't even really be a remake. It would just be another adaptation. Oh, okay. Because as far as I'm aware, they're going to make it a TV series because fantasy TV show is the flavor du jour at the moment. Uh, but I haven't heard anything about it in me. Okay. So, upcoming Disney reported live action Black Cauldron um, project. It's just hearsay and it's just hearsay and nothing else. Mm. Saying like Frogs are in TV series, upcoming TV series coming in the 2010, 2020s. So it's some it's some rando online who's saying this, not the actual, not Disney actually. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like a report. Like just report comes from a guy named Daniel Rickman, who had no further information regarding the adaptation. As just no casting or dates have been announced. It's basically just a whole lot of hearsay. That's based on absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the best that we possibly have is a fan casting testing site. That is pretty much it. Hmm. Yeah. Grounds for Dane, I don't know. It is currently like in the huh yeah i had a weird thing i actually read the even numbered books before i read the odd numbered books it was a strange path <laughs> hmm. i bought like a long list of fantasy books that i've never read like that i want to read like i've got pratchett um i've got Ooh. black cauldron you know pratchett uh, Terry Pratchett. Yeah, um, yeah. The the Black Cauldron -y books. Um, probably the first would that I would get around would be the, the second um, Mistborn trilogy. So I've got a nice long list. I've got like a whole, whole global books I want, list of books I want to I want to get, and I'm just too poor at the moment. Maybe for my birthday, which is coming up this month. Knock on wood. Oh, okay. I can if you have it an audible thing i can just share the books with you well we could do you could you could do a book clubby thing the way they do in a in gray yeah. area yeah that's possible yeah mm -hmm. it would actually be fairly quick i know they're probably at your local library they i know they uh that's the way i listened to the wheel of time was i First got them on disc from the uh, the library, at least the middle few. Since for whatever reason, my family bought books one through four, and then they didn't have any of the others except for eleven on Audible. I don't know why. That's weird. Huh. It was weird to me. Yeah, that's some weird. Yeah. So. After that, after we have Cory Arkin and the thing and the I'm beautiful, the beautiful spell, we get a an obvious like spray of green mist floating yeah. around. Yeah, and it's like, oh, so you're tempting Lucy with vanity. Yeah, pretty much. Now, uh, sorry for the rabbit hole again, but that's not century. That's that's not centenary. That's millennium. That's millennium. So, yeah. uh. so 
carry on. I beg your pardon. Yeah. So it is a temptation in the book, but she never goes through with it. But then in the film, she does go through with it, and it's a very tiny what it uh it's a wonderful life moment if anybody's familiar with that admittedly I i've never seen the movie i've only seen the veggie tales version and multiple other iterations across us various tv shows yeah it's it's what you think it is yeah yeah it's basically just if lucy never existed they would have never known own of lion jesus Oh, Morgan Freeman done. There's a difference. Well, Morgan Freeman is God. Aslan is Jesus. <laughs> and, well, Morgan Freeman's the emperor beyond the sea. He. <laughs> so. Ah, uh, explains a lot. Explains yeah. the slavery. <laughs> 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 the Roman thing now uh. explains the slave. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just because by right I own the entire world. That's all. Yeah, all hail God Emperor Balerion, my arch nemesis. This is a glorious moment in the story. So basically, the so basically the alternatives are slaver Valerian versus versus free rights. It's done. <laughs> So, Carastar St. Joseph says, Lucy's temptation was a lesson for us all. Even though I'm not a girl, I can empathize. Especially because she wants, because she also does the spell to find out what her friends think about her. So she does that too. That's a, that's kind of a universal thing. Mm -hmm. Liam Neeson is Morgan Freeman's son. <laughs> <laughs> well, I taught the Rollies. He, he must have had a white, white mom. <laughs> explains, explains the heavenly voice. Yeah, that works. Yeah. yeah. I, the Romans learnt from me, not vice versa. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> obviously, yes. So, so, and after this, there's, throughout this is sprinkle day, some random chap rather than having rinse just be the first mate he's a guy that they bring on the from the lone islands and he's got a daughter that stows away and she basically plays no part in proceedings other than to say i wish that i were like you to lucy and lucy says you should be just like yourself and it's like okay hmm. why is this in the movie is the story is the whole Searching for the seven lords. Is that even in the film? It is, but it... Okay, so essentially how it works is... They, they have to find the seven lords. And the reason for that is the seven lords have seven swords. They must be laid at Aslan's table in order to stop Dark Island. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Random, so they're trying to... Random, sorry. No, it's not, so, no, it's not. Uh, they're just, so they're trying to tie together that way. Yes. Okay, carry on, uh, Kodaki Chuck, you're fine. Yeah, random plot MacGuffins for the random plot MacGuffins, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're wrong. That's what it felt like. Uh... Something like that. Yeah. Pardon this racket. <laughs> and they are tacked on, to be fair. The one in the book. Yeah. Also, like, that's kind of the thing about Narnia. Magic swords don't exist in Narnia. The closest you get is yeah. Rindon. That is a weird name for a sword. I don't, it doesn't even, I don't even know what that name means. In Narnian, or if there is an even is even an, an, a meaning behind that strange name, uh, but that's mainly because it just never rusts, and it was given to 
Peter by Santa Claus, Father Christmas, same difference, St. Nicholas, and I think that it was a good choice that they decided to bring the um, uh, the sword with them. I think that, that was a good choice. I think how it is used is really stupid, though. Yep. They brought Rindon Rind Rind with them, right? Yep. Yeah, they brought Peter's sword with them, and there's a weird thing of Edmund and Caspian are kind of well, not really like at each other's throats. There's just one moment where Drinian says the chain of command starts with King Caspian. And that's it. And then at Goldwater slash Dragon Island. Oh, God. Instead of a, I'm not, well, it's kind of a pissing match in the book, too. But it's less on the nose than it is in the movie. And it's based on yeah, the book, really. Yeah. Yeah, in the yeah, book, in the, book the Goldwater scene is, uh, it's, they're obviously both being affected by the water, by the, by the by the spell um that's what and then later on edmund when caspian gets a weird mood he wants to go to the end of the world and he gets all kind of gets a little bit mira uh tolkien i'm uh, not Tolkien. caspian has a teeny tiny bit of miras in him in the books which is interesting so he gets into these moods where he wants to be like a, where he wants to be a dictator and you know and just say, oh, I want to do blah, so I'm going to do blah. It doesn't usually last, usually last very long, but it gets into these moods. So it gets into this mood at the end, and Edmund has, has to tell him, I'm not your subject, and I'm telling you, you can't do this. At the end, mm -hmm. because Caspian's a bit stupid at the end of the book yeah. for a bit. <coughs> oh, oh, interesting. Uh, Mr. St. Joseph, she has a very serious boyfriend <laughs> who is built like a truck. Is six foot five and built like a truck. Oh. Oh, are we going to have a dramatic rivalry thing going on here? Cool. You may, you may actually. <laughs> we like classical. <laughs> I think that's the worst. You want statuesque, that's the word you want. Or buxom, that also works. Statuesque <laughs> is good because it works for tall people, too. Yeah. So, and the weird thing with, and of course with Gold, Gold Island is with all the other places of temptation, which I don't even get what the point of the temptation is. I don't get it. It does not make any sense to me. No, okay, which really temptation are we talking about now? Well, I just mean like the purpose of the temptations in general. The only one that I kind of get the point of is uh, Edmund to just give up. That's the only one I can think of as having any other point. Well, let's see. In the books, Lucy gets tempted by that spell. Uh, Eustace gets tempted to be greedy and turns into a dragon. And Eustace already is kind of a jerk, although you mm -hmm. can understand his point of view. Caspian is tempted to just say, hey, you know, I want to go to the end of the world, so I'm going to go to the end of the world. And then everyone gets tempted by gold at, at gold water. Well, not everyone. Uh, everyone apart from mostly Lucy, I guess, gets tempted by the gold there. So there's that. And Edmund doesn't get tempted at all that I can remember. I think it was actually Edmund and Caspian that were tempted by the uh, gold. Oh yeah, you can. There's a little bit of temptation for Edmund too. It's not as strong as for Caspian, but there's a bit of temptation going on there too. Yeah, because I'm not your subject. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. We mentioned that. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I think he says mm -hmm. that expresses that sentence twice. 
Um, but I, and, but with both of them, we see the the green mist floating around. And oh, okay. It's like, like you see it under the water, but it's super obvious. And I guess in the book, it's just kind of. It's almost just a, an odyssey thing. There's no overall like point to the temptations other than this is the individual obstacle of the island. With this, there's a motivating factor behind all the temptations, but I don't know what the motivation is besides temptation. Yep. And it's just it doesn't. It's not a matter of you got to be pure in order to do this, because Eustace puts the darn sword on the on the thing. <laughs> and well, I guess he's redeemed, but they just watch it for a scary, scary, scary tall part. <laughs> What was I gonna say? Um, Sorry. Yeah, and the no, 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 you're fine. Uh, temptation, yeah, in the books, the temptation is there, but the temptation, it's in it's part of their their uh, character. It has to do with the soul and, and all that. It's not some external force necessarily that's tempting them. I mean, it could be, but there's it's not explicitly stated that there is, and it's, it's not very. I mean, the, the the green thing, it's not very uh, individualized, perhaps? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Maybe it's not individualized, but it's just like, what is it trying to accomplish with these? Is it... If it was a, you have to be X level of purity to place magic sword on the on the round ta on the table of Aslan. Also, the bit where okay. they, also the bit where they find the seven lords at Aslan, the last of the seven lords on Aslan's table doesn't make any sense because I don't think they were fighting over it. I guess they were kind of fighting whether they should go on, but the thing is it's a giant smoky evil island that's apparently really close to Ramandus Island. It's hard to mess weird too. Yeah. It's so close that Root managed to get there on his own. And he's apparently played by Zedekus Zul Sarander slash the Mouth of Sauron slash really? Zedekus Zed uh, Bruce Spence. But who's Bruce played Spence. by but who is played by Bruce Spence? Uh, the Mouth of Sauron and Zed. But I mean, who else? Who in this film? Roop. Oh, okay. That's what the I was asking. Oh. The <laughs> crazy man on that Dark Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who he is. Yeah. Fair enough. Eslin's message is you must not be a... <laughs> <laughs> not be a... Yes. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, dear. Uh, oh, Eustace's... Did they even have Eustace's at all with Oslin or did they just like, speed over that? They sped over it basically instead yeah. of the uh, you will have to let me undress you, which is weird. Yeah, it had weird, yeah. and I don't think that yeah. will ever make it into anything mainstream, no. especially yeah. not these days. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, Eustace wouldn't, I mean, Eustace Lewis wouldn't have t necessarily read it that way, but yeah, no. Yeah, yeah it's it's implication, a, really. Yeah, it's more of a a shed symbolic shedding of who you used to be, but the uh, he basically rips off his skin 
and throw then throws him into the water. Is yeah, it's 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 as yeah, much as but... like, he describes it as really painful. It is a good metaphor for the painful process of repentance, but the you will have to let me undress you, coupled with the ripping open the dragon. Yeah. I don't um, think you could do that. No. No, you can't do that. Unfortunately, civili unfortunately civilization has done things. Well, some of the things civilization has done since then are good, but not all. <laughs> He's a dude who's perfect <laughs> swearing. He's definitely swearing it done. But we all get forgiven with that. Yeah, I think What's that, bad uh, about that? <laughs> and, also, well, when we could all be forgiven for that. <laughs> Well, yeah. also when he tells me to shut up, but he hasn't done that lately. Yeah. So actually, uh, Tarek said uh, what I said. Who wants him for Ghostbusters 2016? He said, yeah, that's a ghost. Uh, that's a big ghost. Screw yourself. Good buddy. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. Maybe. Yeah, true. But basically what happens is Eustace gets shank when... Uh, Rook throws his magic sword at him, and it gets into Eustace's shoulder. Eustace flies off and crash lands on an island. Just a random spit of sandy island out of, in the middle of the ocean. And Aslan just shows up and starts clawing the ground, and magic claw marks start appearing on Eustace's chest. And... Uh, then he just turns into a girl, boy, a real boy, and then drops onto Ramadu's island so that he can lay the last sword on Aslan's table while the evil Green Mist is trying to stop him. And then when he lays it on the table, Edmund's magic sword because he now has the sword, Peter's sword. He's, it, it starts glowing and because he stabs the sea serpent in the mouth, his temptation regarding his wet dreams is gone now. This is an inspiring moment in the story. It beats about everybody equally. So, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was in the middle of our date night. It was amusing. <laughs> what was amusing? Uh, him saying, "That's a big ghost. Screw yourself, buddy." Okay. Yeah, that was amusing. Yeah, it was hilarious. Uh, it's kind of weird that they decided to. I guess. I guess like it kind of makes sense, but they decided to merge the. Sea Serpent and Dark Island attack. It, like, Dark Island in the book is almost Lovecraftianly creepy, where it just drives you mad. It doesn't try to kill you with a giant sea serpent. Yeah, um, it's just uh, it's a genius Loki, Lochi. I've never heard that term before. What is that? Uh, oh, um, well, it's not literally, but gen genius, G E, just the normal word genius, Loki, L or Lochi, L O L O C I, the the kind of like the spirit of the place kind of thing. So basically, what I'm saying is it's localized. You know, I actually have heard that term before on a Yu-Gi-Oh card, but I didn't know that was an actual thing. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> <A> Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> well, I'm glad that anime or whatever can be educational sometimes. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah. There's a card called Sunseed Gen Genus Loci, and it's a tree. It's a uh, part of a tree. A plant link deck.
Nick, it's, it's weird. I don't know. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. What is what? That? You're uh, very much getting staticky. Ah. Yep. You got you got microphone problems, or else yeah. internet problems, one or the other, or computer problems. Some some kind of technical thing is happening to you. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, Sunseed Genus Loci is a card that exists. All right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I've, yeah, that, that was, an, that was, yeah, that's cool. I finally know that that's an actual thing that means something rather than just something the people of Yu-Gi-Oh made up. Yep, they didn't make it up. Spirit of the place. Quite common in paganism. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a dryad deck. Hmm. But... Then and apparently, like the green fart has been grabbing all these people, and then when they the the sea serpent is stabbed, they get released, and the dark island vanishes. And it's kind of annoying because in the book. They follow an albatross out, and the and the albatross, who's really Aslan, destroys mm -hmm. the island. They've managed to pass their test, as opposed to them defeating it in an action climax, which kind of makes it less scary in a way, because it's the idea that no mortal hand could defeat this. Yeah, which helps even more to make it really, really creepy. Yeah. And that just creates some major issues with the overall arc of the story, especially with Edmund, because he doesn't really overcome anything, and it's just a rehash of Peter's arc, which Edmund seemed like he was pretty well developed. Mm -hmm. At least, like, just he was pretty mature about the whole um, we are kids. It, it's frustrating they went back on that for this movie just because they couldn't think of any other way to have an arc for him. And the real thing is, Edmund doesn't need to have an arc in this movie. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't need to. He could it, just be the wise elder statesman type. Yeah, he's kind of a secondary character. Even in the book, I think. Yeah. And he could and he's used to playing second fiddle. Like in the book he's perfectly fine to like be Caspian second and just work with him. Yep, he only 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 on those two occasions that I mentioned, which are kind of special cases. Uh, one where it's a magic spell and the other one because Caspian's being an idiot. Yes, essentially, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, what? I got a gun. I think tell Becca to behave herself. What? A... No comment. <laughs> yeah, same here. Well, don't you know that Becca is the most wholesome person on this stream, aside from maybe Valerian? Yeah, mm. yeah it's, it's kind of a toss-up. I'm not sure which of us is the more wholesome. Yeah. And then they get to the end of the world. And this bit is, they try to do the thing with Prince Caspian, but he brings himself out of it without any help from anybody else. Partially because he has not done any megalomania stuff, really. Mm. But even in the Goldwater thing, he's saying, you can't take anything out of Narnia Edmund. And then they, f and then they fight. It's it's really forced. Edmund, yeah, especially since Edmund escalates the fight, not yeah. Caspian. Yeah. In the film, as opposed to the book, where it's it's 
really weird. Very weird. Uh, the whole this whole thing kind of ruins Edmund's character. It's so frustrating. Indeed. And then they go through. There's a Rupa Cheap's pretty much the best thing in the movie, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. So Craig does a actually. It's actually interesting that Mister. Uh, 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 Eddie Izzard and Simon Pegg sound relatively similar. They do. Simon but... Pegg was clearly doing a very good impression of uh, Eddie Izzard. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry. Who? What? I missed. I'm out. I was. I was step away. Uh, no worries. Uh, it was just that uh, the um, Edmund uh, Eddie Izzard and uh, Simon Pegg both play Reaper Cheap, and it's very. Uh, it's actually hard for me to tell the difference between the two. Yeah, but who think did it better? Okay, though? Cool. Yeah. Just side note for a second. Who do you think did it better? Like, is he is that or Um, Because they're both really good performances, exactly. I actually don't know, because I didn't... I couldn't mm. see any differences, really, between the two. Yeah, true. Uh, it's kind of a hard decision, really. I think that uh, there was less quippiness with Simon Pegg's one. I think that's kind of a difference in how they're written because yeah. Prince Caspian Reepicheep is a little bit more quippy and probably a little less... Uh, a little bit... It seems like he's kind of... He's a bit more humble in Dawn Treader. Like he he doesn't say stuff like uh you remember the part where Lucy says, Oh my gosh, she is so cute. Who said yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the comedy though. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's and he's like, You people have you're a mouse. I was hoping for something a little more original. Or yes, I'm a mouse. Well, people have no imagination these days. <laughs> I think it was just actually it was it, you people have no imagination, which really sums up today's media these days. Let's be frank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need to get that clip. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get that. <laughs> you uh, have no imagination. We're going to be putting that a lot with. Uh, Rings of Power and Wheel of Time Season 2. Oh. Actually, I don't know if Wheel of Time Season 2 is going to be bereft of imagination. It's just going to be bad imagination. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since apparently they're changing a lot of stuff from the book, and I'm going to be pissed. Well, Rings of Power um, is basically all the imagination of the writers. <laughs> I mean... It's kind of essentially... They got like nine pages of stuff that they can adapt. So depending on how they got the job of showrunners, I would cut them a little bit of slack, but depends on how they go. Did they waltz in like like uh, Benioff and Weiss or was the job wished upon them? So it depends. I, well, mm. we know for sure that they got a recommendation from J.J. Abrams. So ah. I am thinking that it might be Benny off and Wise situation there. Probably. Yeah. So if they waltzed in there, then if they just waltzed in there, that's one thing. And if they had it wished on them, it's another. Yeah. It, since they have no credentials, they actually have less credentials than Benny off and Wise did. <laughs> How is that possible? But at least they're unlisted script doctors. Supposedly oh, okay, for okay. ten years, but they've just they've okay. been working in the industry for a while. But they're like the only thing that they have on their resumes officially on IMDb is they were uncredited script doctors on Star Trek: Star Trek Beyond. Ah, hmm. Benioff had at least done Troy, and if 
X Men Origins Wolverine uh, and a couple other projects. Mm. Admittedly, all those projects are bad to varying degrees, but at least he did something. Yeah. Like, at least he yeah. had credits to his name, like official writing credits. These guys don't, and it's really frustrating. They're yep. basically, all you need to do is basically just know J.J. Abrams, and then he can open doors for you. And just weird statements like, we're going to write the book that Tolkien never did. And it's like, I hate you. I hate you yeah. so much. Yep. We're going to write the book that Tolkien never did. That's probably, well, sort of true. It is, but... Maybe, but... Like, it, it just kind of... Sh I, I get the feeling that this is this was a Benioff... I get the sense that I smell nepotism slash Benioff and Weiss situation. Mm -hmm. I I don't think that this was... I don't think that these guys are all guys. I think that, I'm just like, this feels like a Benny Y situation where we're going to be repeating the same sentiment where the, this author said, imagine what could have happened if we got the best to do Game of Thrones. And maybe they understand the technicals of screenwriting, but I don't believe they know how to run a show at all. Mm. Write who on? Write a show. Write or manage a show. It'll be interesting. But, yeah. But I don't know if there's anything else to really say about Voyage of the Dawn I think we've covered most of the mm -hmm. unfortunately bad elements of this movie. A lot of it comes from a lack of confidence in the source material and a lack of a an understanding of a journey of the satisfaction of getting to the end of a journey. Yeah. Especially in a fantasy movie where they think, oh, you gotta have a fantasy battle. You gotta have well the chart says Well the chart says Art says we gotta have it. It's like you no know, <laughs> You, movies are more than just it's kind of a, almost like superhero movies and just for a while there were like just action climax after action climax in superhero movies and then stuff like Joker uh, kind of shifted that around a little bit uh, hmm. there's very movies. little action in Joker yeah hmm. yeah yeah, it's more of a character study. Yeah, less is more, essentially. Mm. Yes. Um, I mean... Uh, Voyage isn't... <sighs> it's offensively bad, it's just boring. It's just got a lot of... Yeah, it's just boring, essentially. And... and Kind of structurally flawed. It's there's a lot of structural problems. Yeah, yeah. Especially when they try to make a villain, and it feels like the villain, what the villain's doing, is pointless. It, since they succumb to the temptation in one degree or another, but we don't no idea what point it serves. Hmm. Since yeah, there's no. You must have X paragon points in order to to defeat the darkness. And if you do anything bad, your paragon points go lower. Hmm. So basically, it's a video game. Pretty much. You know. Yeah, but it's a video game where the mechanics are so obtuse as to be useless. Bother. <laughs> yeah. But at least the the. There was a nice farewell scene between Eustace and Reaper Chief. There was that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I did like the, um, and I did love the and I did like the farewell between uh Reaper Chief and Lucy where she finally gets to cuddle him. Though 
I wish that was stated in the moot. I it's kind of interesting that in the book there's actually a little bit more meaning because you see that Lucy had always wanted to cuddle him, but he never did. But she never did because it would have offended him deeply. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a callback yeah. to that. Yeah. There's only the oh oh my gosh, she is so cute. That's pretty much the only thing. Pretty much. Although hey, there's one thing I say about the entirety of the films, like the main cast, like you know, for the Pebbertons exactly. The acting's pretty solid all around. Yeah, I would agree. But they they really gel well, the actors. Hmm. Sure, the acting and seems they, like it's sorry. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And they just gel well as it seemed like they gel well as people. They mm -hmm. Like they feel like siblings. I am interested to see what will happen, but it seems as though Narnia at the moment is in development purgatory. Yep. There's really nothing being done with this IP at all. It hasn't been done. Nothing has been done with this IP in ten years. Does anybody? Be years. Is there anyone out there who wants to do something with it? Was been waiting for a chance, but can't because it, it's owned by Netflix or whatever. Uh, hmm. Actually, we, oh, I was wrong. It's been ten, twelve years. Oh wow! Since Voyage of the Dawn Treader came out, and nobody has done yeah. anything with Narnia in twelve years. That's surprising. I guess Especially time will tell. Sorry. Yeah, I guess. It's similar to The Hobbit. Actually, The Hobbit came out in 2014. It's been seven, only seven years since an, a Lord of the Rings thing came out. Hmm. Narnia. Let me actually look. So, BBC Narnia. Let me see. So, BBC Narnia, The Silver Chair came out in 1990. Then 15 years later was uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay. Uh, now let me see. I guess like 15, 12 years isn't that. that Wait, years. this is... What's up? Sorry. Sorry, I interrupted you, but, but I just saw something. There's evidently a trailer or a teaser for the Magician's Nephew film. Oh, from 2015. Really? Was, there's one from 2015, and then there's one from a month ago. A teaser. Oh. I, I get the feeling those are fan-made. Yeah. Let's see. AG... AJP V link. Creations is one of them on YouTube. Movie Rays on YouTube. And someone whose name I can't pronounce, something like Teron Gorbon on YouTube. Hmm. One I, from 2014, one from 2015, and one from a month ago. Hmm. Yeah, this is fan made. I'm looking at it right now. It's fan made. Yeah, it looks like it. But. Unfortunately. Where can I watch The Magician's Nephew? Um, you kind of can't. <laughs> the Chronicles of Narnia films are Narnia plus Disney plus Narnia web, but there's no Magician's Nephew thing. Yeah. Is there an upcoming Narnia movie? Uh, we'll finally have a fourth installment. What? Okay. The Silver Chair is actually going to come out. Is that what they're telling me here? Oh my goodness. Netflix bought the rights in 2018 and they've done nothing with it in four years. Oh. Okay. The concussion writer Helmer, John Krasinski. John what are you talking it's... about? What's the king what's the king of oil have to do with anything? King of oil? What on earth has that to do with anything? 
Why are you putting the Chronicles of Narnia, the silver chair on there when that's what you're talking about? Shut up. Give me what I'm actually looking for, you idiots. Oh my goodness. So Netflix apparently paid $250 million for the rights to Narnia. Huh. Hmm. And they haven't. Yeah, it's apparently, like in 2013, Joe Johnson and David McGee. Uh, we're doing a silver chair adaptation, but the project was abandoned due to creative differences. Yeah, I'm trying to get some information here. The Mark Gordon Company, they don't give you much actual information here. Mark Gordon Company will be developing silver chair, it says. That's yeah. trivia? Why are you calling that trivia? Give me some actual information. Yeah. Yeah, it seems as though, like, they've utterly, like, it just seems as though there's nothing really happening with Narnia right now. The only person that has it is Netflix, and they're pretty much, pretty much dormant at this point. Yeah, they're not telling me a lot, an awful lot of information here, so which is a bad sign. Is, a lot of it might be outdated information, too, since it's, like... There's, I see interstitial, like 2018 and 2020 information. And then like 2020 and the rest of it have, like 2020 really hurt the film industry mm -hmm. and halted development. And, but, uh, oh, ow. Yeah, no, Daniel Green, um oh no 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 ah. be like religious uh, no, no 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 it says ah. it probably won't ah no it says so, it I, probably won't um i, I really i i'll have to i want to link to that video because i want to like i i like daniel green occasionally i did not like his wheel of time stuff like, I know, like, he doesn't like uh, Narnia, Narnia very much, um, which is fine, since that's just not his gig, but don't change it to be less religious. That's dumb. The last there's, book is the apocalypse. There's not much point in doing it if you're going to get rid of the religious aspect completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, maybe you can make it more subtle. Yeah, you can make it more subtle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can. But you can't, you can't get rid of it all together without getting rid of all the themes. And you can't really, like, how, modernize it, how so? I need to, like, I do like Quinn, but I'd be like, what exactly do you mean, Mr. Quinn? Like, I, like, I actually kind of agree with Quinn on a lot of things. With like, who? Quinn. Quinn's ideas of ice and fire. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. But this one, no. Like, I agree with him in terms of the uh, uh, House of the Dragon. He's not terribly excited. I'm not terribly excited either. Though I admit that I'm, like, cautiously optimistic. It's pretty much a situation of the two ugly girls in between the moder with the two with the one semi good looking girl in between makes the the semi good looking girl look gorgeous by comparison where on one side i you have rings of power on the other side you have wheel of time and in the middle is house of the dragon and it's like okay you got two horribly warty, disgusting, overweight women that are the size of walruses, and you have a moderately attractive looking girl in the middle. Rule of contrast is very much in the House of the Dragon's favor. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, the trailer looks cool. The, the teaser looks cool. I just think that the trailer looks cool. Yeah. 
It sounded cool. They had actually dialogue in this one, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one that got posted by a, let me see. Who did post that? Pardon whoever posted it. I think it was Raptor. I think it was okay. either, I think it was Raptor or Great Scott. Let's see. Um, I think it was a I think kind of think it was Raptor too, but I'll just double check. Uh, that, that was Raptor, yes. Yeah. I, I did think it looks good. We'll have to react to the trailer and see what we think of it. Uh, I might check around, see some analysis videos, see if there's other people thinking, and we can kind of debate ideas back and forth. Yeah. I don't think the dragon hasn't done it yet. Well, the dragon is kind of away from his computer at the moment, I think. Well, his computer's dead. Yeah. Computer. So he has a bunch. He has a bunch of things that he that he put out before that hat before he sent it in. But he's not going to be able to react right away. Unfortunately, he's yeah. going to be annoyed. Probably. Well, I think I know what a, at least a few of the things in the trailer are. I am interested to see House of the Dragon. It is definitely, like, as it's going to be coming out, it's going to be compared to Rings of Power, and I imagine that most of the comparisons will be favorable. Unless it is monumentally bad, it will at least be, be better than Rings of Power, because Rings of Power has no hope in hell of being good. No. I mean, it was the big sea war of the worlds, but that's a different story. Pardon me. Yeah. Let's make Narnia not Narnia. Yay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, well, I think that'll about cover it. Yep. Tomorrow's writer showcase as per usual, and that'll be Tarek, Aspiring, and Carl. And then Saturday, we're going to finish off Witcher, or try to. Uh, Monday, we're going to finish off Legend to the seeker and then we're going to figure out what we're going to be doing from there Alrighty, we will see you All guys right. later folks adios uh, bye bye kill me just end it